Hello and welcome to today's webinar, How Paper Free Can Help You Find What You Need When You Need It. I'm Teresa Resick, Director of Webinars here at AIM, and AIM is your host and producer. With me today are AIM analyst Bob Larravee and a panel of industry thought leaders. And our webinar is underwritten by EMC. IBML and Pro Conversions Corp, and we thank them for their support. And thank you for taking the time to join us today. And before we get started, just want to offer you a few pointers for viewing today's webinar. By joining our webinars live, you can customize your own viewing experience, and feel free to open and close or resize the different windows to your own preferences. But across the bottom of the screen is a, a list of all that's available to you. You can download a PDF of the presentation at any time. Just look to the resources list in that little box that's to the right of the slide area. And also check out the other resources that we have for you there today as well. Feel free to ask questions throughout the hour using the Q&A feature. We will hold these until the end where we should have about five, about five minutes or so to answer them. Um, and this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted to AIM.org's webinars on demand library in just a few days. And now to introduce our panel of speakers that we have with us today. And um, as I said, Bob Larrabee is our featured speaker, and Bob is the Vice President of Market Intelligence at AIM. And he is an internationally recognized subject matter expert, trainer, lecturer, researcher, and thought leader with over 30 years of experience in the fields of information and process management. He is an avid techie with a focus on the application of advanced technologies to enhance business operations. Prior to his current position, Bob has held various positions within the vendor and reseller communities, as well as um, a consultant and analyst. Bob entered the emerging technologies industry with Wang Laboratories, where he focused on imaging, workflow, digital annotation, and voice recognition systems. And then our panelists with us today, from EMC, we have Jim Hayes. And with nearly 20 years at EMC, Jim has held various positions in the US, Western Europe, and Eastern Europe. And based once again in the US, he is now a principal in product marketing in the Capture Division. Dan Lucarini is the Chief Marketing Officer at IBML, and IBML is a world leader in information capture solutions. Dan has over 20 years experience working with companies to create paper-free and less paper solutions for their digital transformation projects. He also serves on the AIM Board of Directors. And as the founder of Pro Conversions Corp, Michael Godino leverages 22 years of industry experience to effectively implement enterprise class document management solutions. And he is also a 2015 AIM Information Governance Professional. So right now, I am going to turn things over to Bob Larrabee to begin his talk today. Bob? Thank you, Teresa. And uh, thank you to our panelists and, and all of those of you who are joining us today. Um, listening through that, the uh, opening remarks from Teresa, um, you come to realize that sitting here on the panel today is, and I'm going to feel old and maybe feel, make my panelists feel old saying this, but there's nearly 100 years experience collectively between us. Um, and hopefully what we bring to you today, we'll be sharing some of the knowledge and experience and um, all of the things that we've uncovered over the years um, to help you with what you're trying to do. So as Teresa mentioned, um, the focus on this is going to be paper-free, and we kind of based it on our paper-free industry watch report that we did um, to uncover some of the things uh, that people are doing, organizations are doing, some of the challenges even that they're faced uh, with in relation to being paper-free. And so, you know, we know that paper is a big problem uh, for most businesses. And for many of them, reducing that paper uh, or the eliminating paper uh, as much as they can is becoming a common goal for, for a lot of them. Most of them realize that um, they have to become more flexible and more responsive. And the way to do that is really through digital transformation. In, in, in other words, become less reliant on the paper and move to establish a more paper-free environment wherever possible. So paper reduction or paper elimination, if you will. And so part of what I do for AIM in market intelligence is we do research studies. And as I mentioned, this is one of our industry watch reports that um, we took some of this information from. And so we asked the AIM community to describe their view of their office. 
um, is there paper in the office? How much of it is there? And, and why does paper really still exist in your organization? 17% of the folks that we talked to responded that they, uh, they're mostly paper-free. 8% cited that they have implemented a digital mailroom to help along with this. And 31% say their offices, though, are still piled high with paper, and 40%, well, they say they're still fill, uh, filing important stuff on paper. So, so why is paper actually still in heavy use today? Well, 56% of the folks that we talked to said it's to capture signatures. Um, and even though digital signature capabilities and practices have been accepted and, and available for years, this is still one of the biggest drivers for paper use uh, within many organizations. And so we, we then asked about um, some different statements about feeling uh, their feelings about paper-free and, and paper in business. And what we found was 92 percent um, said that removing paper from process is a constant objective for them, and 79%, you know, sense that um, they gave us the sense that all businesses should really start looking at some type of e-signature mechanism to help eliminate the paper from these these processes. So 80% said paper-based content and paper-intensive processes are a huge impediment to remote access and, and telework. Think about that. You know, if you're dealing with paper-based information and you're off-site. Um, you're in a remote location or you're a teleworker, how are you going to be able to access that information? And so, you know, they see paper free as being a starting point uh, for digital transformation, but also to um, enhance these, these remote work capabilities. The idea that we have to make information accessible regardless of where you are 24 7 anywhere on the planet. And these days, of course, with uh, internet capabilities or connect connectivity capabilities, we could even be flying around the globe. And, uh, and see this. So the AIM community, um, who, is, who is the audience that we poll, um, has come back with some of this information. So in other words, what they're telling us, or at least in the words of 72% of the AIM community that we polled, um, says that working at the speed of paper is no longer an acceptable practice. Uh, so we have to get rid of the paper out of these processes. So I'm, I'm going to turn to the panel right now. And, and Jim, actually, I'm going to start with you. What are you seeing these days in relation to organizations? Are they seriously working toward removing paper from their processes? Yeah, thanks, Bob. I definitely think, you know, based on your research, what we see with our customer base, you know, a very strong majority are committed to the digital transformation. But as you notice also from the research, you know, I think it's 4% have actually achieved the paperless office. So even – as you mentioned, and dating us a little bit, going back 20 years, you know, we talked about the paperless office at that point, but there's still uh, a lot of work to be done. What we also see are, uh, is a lot more interest in multi, a multi-channel approach. So the ability, you know, maybe five, ten years ago, it was all about paper and fax, and now what we're starting to recognize is a very strong interest in handling all these incoming data types, so PDF for invoices and contracts, uh, mobile and electronic information all through the same process. So if you set up a, a capture flow and spend a lot of time doing that, why not capture all the incoming information and automate that uh, immediately? So those are a couple trends that we see in that area. Okay. Thank you. And, and Dan, what are you guys seeing over there on your side of the world? Yeah, hi, Bob. Uh, our customers have been working on seriously removing paper for over 20 years, uh, and the facts are clear. The paper documents are not going to disappear from many mission-critical business processes for many years. Uh, digital transformation demands that all documents must be online, paper included. Uh, Bob, there are huge paper stores uh, still that need converted out there. And we hear story after story from large uh, companies in banking, insurance, and also large government organizations about their digital transformation projects that were supposed to eliminate paper. But adoption by their clients and their constituents was much slower than expected, and the paper persisted, but they didn't have a plan for that. Now, as digital documents become more and more important in the capture mix, organizations must still have the best strategy in place to remove paper from processes as early as possible, for example, uh, by deploying a digital mailroom solution. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and Mike, I'm sure you're seeing some similar things. Do, do you see this cultural as, uh, aspect of it as well, uh, or what exactly are you seeing? 
Yeah, you know, it's uh, right off of what Dan just went through. We uh, work with clients to put together information capture plans, and usually those plans have four four components. One is the scanners, and you have to have fast scanners that have good image enhancement, multi-feed detection that can take good image quality. Uh, the second mm -hmm. is having a good piece of capture software, something that can classify documents and OCR the components when you need to. A document management system that's out of the box, has Microsoft-based technology, is easy to deploy, um, has the ability to add on workflows so you can automate business process. And a key component of your capture plan is having a governance plan by your document types. So as the business receives those documents, you want to be able to index them and store them so that everybody can find them uh, along those core common indexes. Back to you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. So, so basically what we're all saying is that we're seeing a, a growing movement to identify and improve these paper intensive processes and, by, and to do that um, through paper reduction and elimination. Um, so definitely businesses are sensing that there's this need to unclog paper intensive processes, open the flow of information through the organization, not just departmentally, but from an end to end business process um, perspective. So, you know, we, we kind of took a look back and, and said, you know, what are we um, actually seeing? What kind of progress are we seeing? And so we asked our audience to describe how um, they would describe their progress, progress toward eliminating paper from the business processes. And, and better than half, 52% said they're making good progress toward being paper-free. 16% uh, say they're actively looking at every process. Now, that means that they are going beyond the departmental. They're going end to end. So they're looking at every process, and 3% say they've actually reached their goal. So, so interestingly, 7% say they are still, still sticking with paper. Now, it, this could be due to a number of reasons. Um, it could be regulatory based on where they are, where they're located around the globe. Um, it could also be the reluctance of uh, the human element, you know, the human uh, element of reluctance to change. We get comfortable in what we do. Uh, we get comfortable in how we do it. And sometimes that's, that's a difficult step to take. And so we started to ask the question, or we asked the question, you know, what are the immediate priorities to improve um, the current capture systems that they have. And when we asked about those priorities, 57% said that they see the automation of manual processes as their key focal point. So what they're trying to do is eliminate these manual steps. To a degree, eliminate the human element and automate as, many, as much of the process as they can. From an end-to-end -end perspective, 27% see that linkage and the speed of moving information from one process to the next is their point of focus. So the idea of not just moving information from person to person, but taking it and moving it from one process into the next. So when we, we um, took it to the next level and we said, what are the drivers? So if you're actually doing this and you're seriously looking at these processes, what is the driving factor um, to move toward improving this capture process and be more paper-free? We found that improved searchability and shareability of documents was the top driver for 53%. Not necessarily a surprise because, you know, since the ability to search for and find digital information is more effective than, and, and efficient than through paper, it stands to reason that people would want to increase their levels of productivity. And not only that, it removes, uh, reduces the storage space and, and gives you the ability to respond faster to inquiries. Somewhat surprisingly, though, um, sustainability was cited by only 4% as a top driver, and this is something that I thought would rank much higher given the challenges faced in maintaining paper-based information. You know, and the emphasis pre, uh, placed today on business with res, uh, related to uh, disaster preparedness. So when I talk about things like disaster preparedness and business continuity, what I'm talking about is the what-if scenario. You know, um, I happen to live in Florida, and of course, we're known for hurricanes, and this year, for some reason, tornadoes out of season. Um, so what if something were to happen? And so the idea of digital preparedness, the idea of being ready for this type of thing, um, it's much easier to recover a well-planned and maintained digital information environment than it is to recover paper-based information that is affected by floods, tornadoes, you know, disappears as a result of wind, and so on and so forth. Um, so the idea of, of being ready for this. So I'm going to go back to our panel. Um, 
and and ask you guys, you know, what are you seeing as far as organizations moving to automate um, the capture and classification process? So, Dan, I think I'll start with you for this one. Um, what are you guys seeing today? Uh, our customers have been deploying automated classification for years, Bob, uh, and there are two main business drivers. Number one, uh, they want to speed up the capture of uh, insights, valuable insights that they can gain from documents about their customers or their business processes, and they want to deliver those results into their business processes, say their analytics uh, or another business application, and get it there as fast as possible. Uh, this is in line with doing business at the speed of the Internet. Uh, the second business driver that's been around for years is uh, customers have been working diligently to drastically reduce very expensive human errors uh, at the point of capture and reduce those or even eliminate those before that bad information is passed over to the system of record or to a uh, uh, business process. Uh, what's new uh, are continual innovations in classification technologies and uh, an explosion in computing power. So now we can harness uh, uh, these advancements to solve more automation problems and increase the accuracy of the results uh, more than ever mm -hmm. before. Great. Mike, what about you? Uh, are you seeing well, this movement to automate the capture and classification process as well? Yeah, I mean, most of our clients are looking to not only automate business process but eliminate the paper, right? So mm -hmm. um, we're, we're not only going along the lines of what Dan was saying where uh, we're looking to auto-classify and extract the data, but a lot of our clients are looking at e-form technology and how do I skip paper altogether and just submit mm -hmm. a document right from right from the website, um, as well as utilizing workflows so that you can route documents around your business for certain mm -hmm. approvals or stamps or collecting other pieces of like data, GL or something like that, um, and then feeding that into a, a core system of record. So, Again, just to, to recap, it's really around eliminating paper and having a, a capture plan so that you can now find the documents when they're digital in the future. Great. And, and Jim, what are, your, what are your customers telling you these days? What are they asking you for? Yeah, and Bob, I think we see a real you know, heavy combination of OCR and auto classify. So these are really related. And uh, as Dan mentioned, you know, with the, with IBML and other scanners, you know, increasing the quality of the, the dots per inch and the scan quality, the OCR rates and the classification kind of go up in relation to those improvements as well. Uh, some of the newer uh, OCR engines are also, you know, before you had 70, 80 percent uh, OCR accuracy rates. Now you're in the high 90s, which kind of equates to, you know, pass-through rates in the in the low 90s. So you can actually scan classify OCR an image without anyone touching it and uh, and that's really been pushing and driving the market. One of the interesting uh, research values that you came up with from 2013 it went from 21 percent are using OCR to 41 percent in 2015. So just in two years that's almost doubled and then the other mm -hmm. uh, related factor is 57 percent are going towards auto classify. So you see a real strong interest and um, implementation in that area of auto classify and auto extract. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, there's this this mindset also, that, and I, I kind of got the sense from from all of you in in the same way, um, that capture, um, and now we, I'm hearing this more and more, um, but capture, especially of paper based information, early in the process has become the mantra, right? The mindset is capture early, as early as you can. And in some cases, there's this um, term at first touch point. Okay, so the idea that we're um, capturing information, we're using OCR, optical character recognition technologies, um, to do data extraction, but at the first touch point, so early in the process is the best practice or becoming the best practice. And, and of course, this ensures uh, much greater control and, and security and accessibility over it. So the sooner it enters the, the information ecosystem, we identify it, we classify it, and it becomes available, and of course, um, we can bring it into a process, or it becomes the trigger of process. So the other thing that, that we talked about and, and kind of touched on 
is that there's this, there's also this multi-channel aspect of things that it, not everything is paper anymore. Um, and I think Mike and, and you know everybody kind of touched on this a little bit that we have this digitally born information, digitally created. And so what do you do with this? You know, information is coming at us from all different areas. It's paper. It's coming in from the web. Uh, it's coming through email. Even you know, mobile devices now have the ability to capture this information. So we asked about that, you know, multi-dimensional thinking in order to best address um, multi-channel inbound content. And 40% uh, of the folks that we polled say they're addressing inbound paper and electronic content in an ad hoc fashion. So they don't really have a solid strategy for this necessarily. Um, they're just dealing with it as it comes. 35% of the folks that we, we talked with said that they still print their inbound content and process it the same as they would uh, for paper or paper-based information that enters. So, so they get it electronically or digitally, and then they print it, and they handle it in the same way that they do with all other paper. Only 3% of the folks that we talked with said they have a really comprehensive approach to, to doing both um, electronic and paper-based content. So this is kind of an interesting thing, you know, and it may get back to the, the idea of the cultural aspect. And, uh, not really sure about that, but there is this reluctance sometime on the human side of things. So we did ask, you know, which of the following best describes how you mostly deal with inbound documents and forms, right? So how are you actually doing this? Um, and when we, when we looked a little bit at this, 26% said that they're scanning in advance of the process. And 7% of this said they're using the digital mailroom. It gets back to the idea of you know, bringing everything in through that central source. But 11% said they're using a multi-channel approach. So they are taking this thing seriously, the, this concept seriously, that they have to get this information, ideally at the first touch point, you know, the minute they, they touch something, some bit of information or content, to capture it right then and there and bring it into the ecosystem, into the information environment. So, Mike, um, let's start with you this time, just to kind of be fair and go through the rotation. What are your customers talking about in relation to early capture, and, and what ways are they, they approaching you in relation to multi-channel capabilities? Sure, Bob. I, I think the, what I'm going to put it in the, the words of an invoice just to try to – because everybody can relate to receiving invoices, right? So okay. it, having early visibility to an invoice means I know when it hits the, the business. I have uh, – uh, you know, the data comes in. I'm seeing the images. I'm able to route it immediately. Uh, I have visibility to pay it early if there's discounts. So there's a, a lot to just being able to – uh, capture it early in the business and, and as it comes in, which we say to, from the mailroom, right? So mm -hmm. you have visibility. You also create an audit trail from the date it was, you know, from the time you received it to when it was moved to who touched it, who added the GL or the cost center coding, who approved it, and who released it out. So I think that's all a component, but the multi channel capture comes down to having a portal and uh, mm -hmm. EMC's Captiva product is a, a great solution to be able to route invoices through a portal. It comes through the portal. It captures all of the critical information, whether it's a fax, an email, a piece of paper, a scanned document can all go through the same portal. And after it comes out of the portal, it's an EDI transaction that can feed your back-end, you know, not only document management, but also your accounting system. So that's, I think, a good way to explain why having a capture early in the in the in the part or early in the market is important. Okay, great. So so let's bring that over to you, Jim. Um, what are your customers talking about in relation to capture first touch point and, and get that into the information environment or ecosystem? Yeah, thanks, Bob. So I know in my time over in Europe, we called it uh, early archiving, but early capture was certainly very popular. Over there, it's it's becoming, and a, and a lot of times, if you kind of think of it in a phased approach, you know, you have the digital mailroom, which would be kind of the mailroom first, you know, mm -hmm. capture, uh, reduce manual processes, and uh, faster turnaround time to process for customers. So customer stat and redu reduction of manual processes really drive the ROI in the digital mailroom. And that was really the, the early archiving piece of the early capture and classify. And then from there, it kind of branched out to remote capture, the ability to scan, you know, if you have individual agents out in the field, instead of them sending faxes, maybe having a, a scanning device in the field where they could immediately capture at the right DPI and image quality to drive a lot of those processes back to the mailroom. 
And then, as you mentioned, kind of the, the digital economy piece is <clears throat> extending that vision and those capture processes from the mailroom out to the remote locations and then to these multiple uh, channel applications. So those could be mobile or electronic imports of information. So we really see this as an extension from the mailroom where you've driven that strong ROI to begin with and then driving it out to the remote locations and then supporting these mobile devices moving even closer to the customer. All right, thank you. And and Dan, from a, a your your standpoint, are your customers thinking multi-dimensional in in relation to this? What are you hearing from your clients? Yeah, uh very much uh Bob. Uh we've already established uh, I think on uh this webinar that everyone wants to capture insights from documents as quickly as possible, as early as possible in the process, and pass that valuable information down, uh, no matter what the source is. Uh, mm -hmm. And our customers are no different. Uh, they are in mixed environments now. Uh, let's focus on paper documents, because this is often overlooked for, for the paper that still exists. That means running classification and extraction and applying business mm -hmm. rules as fast as possible, while the paper is actually being scanned. Can't get any faster than that, right? Now, there was a move uh, over the last several years towards having untrained workers try to do this at MFPs or using a small scanner connected to the web at home, in their home office. Mm -hmm. um, but some organizations whose operations depend on the speed and accuracy of capture learn not to trust this critical operation to chance. Uh, they want to control this stage in a centralized managed environment, such as a digital mailroom. Uh, Last year, I wrote uh, a guest column frame about the danger of casual captures. Uh, in some instances, they can cost more and take more time than FedExing the docs overnight to a professional capture operation. This is also why uh, BPOs are seeing strong growth in new capture projects, not the basic scanned archive that Jim was referring to, but intelligent processing applications where they're extracting a lot of value for their customers now. So that's what we see happening. Okay. So so basically what we're all saying is that businesses do have to look at a, a at capture multidimensionally, ranging from paper to everything, and ba everything that's digitally born. And one of the reasons is they need to get a better grip on all this information, right, to better meet their compliance requirements and, and become more responsible and give them better levels of agility or organizational or operational agility. So, you know, we, we kind of looked at this again and said, okay, at what rate are you planning to convert your your processes to become paper-free? So, you know, capturing the paper either through a, a digital mail room, using a, a outsourcer, you know, business process outsourcer to, to do capture uh, or BPO, um, and and um, we asked them, you know, kind of like, are you the tortoise or the hare when it comes to moving forward in your paper-free processes? And 14% of the respondents said they're moving fairly quickly, and 4% indicated, you know, they've even completed their transformation to paper-free processes. Um, does that mean that they've done it across the enterprise? Not necessarily, uh, but as much as they possibly could. 37% told us that they're making little progress. Um, and 11%, you know, they they haven't really started yet. And for some of them, 15%, you know, it's either slow or stalled. And there's a lot of reasons that that could be. Um, it could be that the culture is not ready. It could be um, that they really haven't thought about it or come up with a, a solid strategy or sound strategy, um, in which case, you know, sometimes it might make sense to go back and, and um, consult with somebody like like our panel. Um, so we looked at this and said, okay, somebody has to be making the decisions in these organizations. So who's responsible to ensure that this transformation and change happens? Who's responsible for the processes in the organization? You know, one of the things that I've always always said is that in many cases, process in a business happens through serendipitous need. Somebody had to do something, it worked, and that's the way it, it um, just carried on. So the idea that somebody's responsible for it, who is responsible for it? And 40% of the folks that we talked to said the line of business um, head or the line of business is actually responsible for um, moving the organization forward in the port and the processes that they deal with. 
So they're the ones that make the decision, this is how we're going to function. 14% said it's the head of IT. Uh, but when we talked about that, they said, you know, IT probably has other priorities and they're not necessarily focused on our business processes. And 33% actually said that there's a central department or some type of a, a board related to process in, in their organizations and uh, defining how things work. You know, one of the things that we're starting to see now, or I'm starting to see um, in some organizations, is there's actually this evolving role of this emerging role called chief process officer under the chief operations officer. And so this is one of those things that um, uh, we may start to see evolve even more as we go forward. So when we talk about capabilities in relation to process, things like workflow and BPM, um, in relation to paper-free processes. You know, we asked them to describe their workflow and BPM capabilities, and 36% said they have absolutely no workflow capability at all. 13% um, admitted to having some of this technology in place and some of these capabilities, but they don't use it. 34% said they make use of really basic workflows, and only 17% um, said that they use full workflow and BPM. So the idea of uh, maybe even rules-based processing um, and rules rules engines in place. And so, you know, when we, we look at those types of things in relation to streamlining or automating our processes, this becomes an essential part of discussion. So when we talk about things like um, the decision-making process and, and project process uh, progress, um, who's the, the most likely candidate that you're talking to? Who is it in an organization that you see is driving this from a, a decision standpoint? So I think this time I'll start with Dan. You know, what are you seeing? Uh, oh, uh, Bob, it's definitely a line of business managers uh, or operations managers within lines of business. Uh, I also want to introduce uh, a, a problem that we see in the decision-making process. Everyone is talking about digital transformation, right, and mm -hmm. the use of mobile to enable it. Uh, yep. This is good. Uh, and uh, even IBM L now offers multi-channel capture solutions to support that, uh, but it has an unintended downside. Here's what it is. Processes that still have to deal with paper must be continually refreshed to keep up with business and client demands, new technology. It's just a fact of our technology-driven lives. But oftentimes, the business manager cannot get the budget needed to do that. Why? Because the executive team would rather put money into bright and shiny little apps that may take years to catch on or fail miserably, as we've all heard about. Instead, they should be investing in processes that are contributing to the top and bottom line and continue to do that. So we see that as a problem in project uh, progress uh, because some of the budgets are being starved uh, as money gets diverted into some pet projects that aren't paying off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Jim, let's go over to you. Yeah, thanks, Bob. So we continue to have a, a large group of decision makers are in the shared services area. What we're starting to see a lot more of, and it kind of validates that 40% number you mentioned, are the line of business app, uh, application owners really driving these decisions and purchase purchases of the of the capture automation software. I think uh, what relates to that as well is that that's probably one reason why only 17% have full workflows. It's because the line of business apps are sponsoring these uh, projects, but only rolling those out initially to a claims or a mortgage app within within the overall organization. So where where we really see a lot of upside and opportunity is in taking you know the quantified benefits of that loan processing application, that line of business, and applying that to the rest of the organization. So a large insurance company, bank. Uh, government entity, you know, if, if you've already achieved this level of automation and this level of success, and we can roll that out to new applications, maybe even adding mobile and using similar capture flows, you know, you have a proven ROI and the ability to implement very quickly. Mm -hmm. And Mike, are you along these same lines? Do you do you see the same thing, the line of business people driving this, or are you seeing something different? No, I mean, I, I believe the line of business uh, traditionally is creating the thing. You know, they're out at these events and their associations uh, learning about new solutions. So they're ended up creating the demand. But it really takes 
having more than just a want to be able to get what you know to get a project off the ground. Mm-hmm. So we typically work with uh, the organizations to put together uh, a needs assessment. And the needs assessment will typically allow us to gather a lot of the requirements about the project and help them put together a project charter, something that they can provide to their management team to move the uh, the ball down the field, as they might say. And we also mm-hmm. use things like master project spreadsheets um, that allow us to share information in one common location so that the whole project team can can see all that information in our project plan. And we look to be a full solution provider to our clients. And by doing that, um, we get the projects going. And uh, Mm -hmm. so if you're looking to move forward with an IBML or an EMC project, Pro Conversions is a full solution integrator and somebody that can help you guys drive that. And, and, you know, you mentioned the idea of requirements and and needs assessment, and that's, that's really important. You know, it, part of the um, reason I think that a lot of organizations struggle is because they don't necessarily have that or they're not as effective at that. The other part of it, too, is executive buy-in. You know, one of the things that I've heard over the years and I've actually seen over the years um, is that positive motion in a project isn't going to happen unless there is some level of executive support there. You know, and by level of uh, executive support, what I'm talking about is not just lip service. You know, where the executive says, this is a great thing, go ahead and do it, but they actually lead the charge. You know, executive buy-in on, on the concept of paper-free environments and focused efforts, really, with a set of clear goals and a uh, way to measure their success, you know, key success me- metrics in place. And so, you know, we went back and we said, what would, first of all, trigger um, your organization to embark on a, a paper-free process and implementation? You know, there has to be a trigger, a vision of some sort. And so when we we investigated this, one of the things that we got back, one of the top three factors that we got back was a mandate from up above. Um, You know, in some cases, it's specific cost savings exercise. Um, Most likely, this is going to be a proactive trigger. You know, we have to reduce our overhead costs. We have to reduce our our operating expenses. The second most important one was actually compliance um, and changes uh, in the way that things work right, and the way that they manage their information. And then the third element that showed up um, was actually big data. You know, the idea, we keep hearing this thing about content analytics or analytics these days to better understand what's going on in, in our world and with our customer base and, and so on. And so analytics was another one. But I think the key there, you know, was the, the top-down mandate and the idea of compliance. And we, we see a lot of things in the news today that make us think about you know, should we be more focused on compliance and, and how do we we do that? So along these lines, you know, we talk about paper-free processes and people who have actually done this and ask, the, you know, what were the key lessons that you learned from your project? And one of the tops that came out was actually uh, executive buy-in. They have to have top-level executive buy-in. The next thing that we found was stakeholder input. And this gets back to the concept of user adoption or the, the element of user adoption. You know, it's great that the executives say that everybody should do this and we're going to move forward. But without the stakeholders buying into this, it's going to be a huge challenge. So stakeholder input, because everything that we do is going to impact the way that they work. You know, the other um, aspect or another aspect of this was the idea of rethinking the entire process. Don't just simply try to automate what's there. But rethink the whole process. Like I mentioned earlier, most processes are uh, born out of serendipitous needs. Something had to happen, somebody did it, and it worked, and that's the way the the business functions, Um, as opposed to actually thinking about the way the business should work or could work um, and um, designing this. And then, of course, the use of standards, best practices, the idea that we train our staff. um, But also, here's an interesting one, uh, beware of the lawyers. Um, and no offense to anybody in the legal industry that that might be sitting in with us. Um, But one of the things that we found in going through this study is that there was a reluctance on the part of the legal counsel. Um, And when you really dig into what the reasons are, you know, what the the level of discomfort is in in particular, oftentimes you find that you can address this pretty effectively. Um, So it's not a matter of run from it. It's a matter of... um, how do we work together as a team, really? 
And that's one of the things that I think um, we have to take into consideration. So we moved to this paper-free environment. There is a great benefit from going paper-free, um, or at least reducing the amount of paper that we have. And one of the things that we found is that there is an ROI that, that can occur as a result of this, and in as little as six months. Um, some organizations report that almost immediately they start to see a significant difference um, in their, their return on investment. When we talk about the big, biggest benefits from being paper-free, um, one of the things that we asked was, what do you see as? And, and so faster customer response, 43% said, faster customer response is what we're, um, we're seeing. For, and this means that now when the customer approaches us, they have an inquiry, they need some information, we can immediately react to it. Productivity and compliance, of course, and then better monitoring of, of workflow. But another thing that was really interesting was improved visibility to non-local or mobile staff. 22% said they had better visibility into what was going on out there um, with their remote workforce. So when we said, you know, we, we talked about the idea of the six-month turnaround, what would you say um, was the general payback? Our respondents basically came back and said, you know, 50 or for 59% of them, um, they said that they achieved pay, payback in less than 12 months and 28% in less than six months. 84% extended that a little bit and said, yeah, going paper-free, you know, we realized a, a return on that within 18 months. So, guys, um, what are your customers telling you in relation to ROI? And I think, Mike, I'll, I'll probably begin with you this time. Sure. Uh, I think it's not only just about ROI, but it's also about the softer pieces of that where you're not just saying, you know, I can get my money back in six months or eight months or something like that. But our clients, and again, I'll go back to the invoice process because that's really our expertise, is that more than two times, an invoice client will see more than two times reduction in their invoice processing costs just by going with an automated capture solution. They also have uh, be able to process 50% more invoices in the same amount of time. So mm -hmm. uh, you know you're able to save time, save money, and have a out of the box pre-configured solution that reduces your cost. Um, so when you're looking at ROI, it shouldn't just be hey you know this costs this amount of money and I can get that back and and so forth. You, you have to really look at what other things do I benefit here. Okay, um, Jim, what are your thoughts on this? What are your customers telling you? Yeah, I think as Mike mentioned before, you know, it all starts with the analysis and really agreeing on the success criteria. So just, uh, you know, throwing out an ROI, I, I do agree with the general numbers, and those align with what we see, you know, simple horizontal app maybe in six months as you add a more advanced line of business app like claims, mortgage, what we see is generally a 12-month or less but again, the key element, understanding, kind of boxing it into a certain application and understanding the success requirements and what they'd need. And that really maps as well to the ability to leverage the auto classify and OCR technologies. So how quickly can you get those up and running? Uh, find those low hanging fruit, the applications or the documents that are easy to automate and get those passing through as quickly as you can with no manual interaction. Uh, from there, what we see is a lot of uh, the longer ROI would be more like the mailroom adding multi-channel, and that would be kind of in that 18-month time frame. And as you get into that, you can also benefit from data center consolidation. So we've seen some of our customers have three data centers and been able to consolidate down to two without adding mm -hmm. any additional headcount. So big time uh, savings in terms of data center consolidation, and lastly, the ability, as you mentioned before, Bob, to, to do these big data imports with analytics. And that's also kind of in that 18-month time frame, the ability to pull in, you know, 100 million images that have been archived, run them through OCR and ICR, classify, and process those to a BPM or content management solution. So, yeah, that 18-month time frame is important because you see a lot of the data center consolidation and big data imports kind of being justified in that, in that time, time frame. Right. And Dan, ROI, I know you probably see something uh, in here or people are coming back to you and saying, hey, here's what happened for us. Uh, oh, definitely, Bob. And I want to go back to what uh, Mike started out with uh, and uh, just say amen uh, to that, Mike. Uh, 
I, I want to give a bit of a contrarian view here. Uh, ROI is still important, but I think we're putting too much emphasis on it. Uh, it's an old standby uh, for our industry. Mm -hmm. Our customers are asking about the total cost of ownership for a paper-free solution over its life cycle. And just as important, just as important, they want to know, is it future-proofed against early obsolescence? Because they're going to commit when they uh, get into a change process like this, it's not something that they're going to run for one year. Uh, they're changing fundamental business processes that may touch their client base or their constituents if they're a government agency. And they're looking at life cycles of five, seven, even ten years because they understand it's going to take time to also change those processes. So future-proof solutions, this is a huge part of the discussion. Now, ROI is still uh, a critical piece, but it's just one piece of that. Uh, taking a business view of the total life cycle and looking at it from end to end also informs the manager whether it makes more sense to own uh, a solution, CapEx, or to rent it, uh, OpEx. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So ROI is important, as you say, in total cost of ownership. And there's also this extension element, you know, when you think multidimensional, the idea of cloud and, and mobile support for paper-free. Um, and some of the benefits that we see in relation to this. Now, one of the things that we find also is that um, staff, business staff, are currently using portable devices of all types, portable scanners, smartphones, tablets, all of these, these different mobile devices that are available to us. And when we explored this a little bit, um, we found that image-only applications were more prevalent. Um, the idea that you know, um, supporting uh, access to these documents uh, or um, photo images and forms, of course. Uh, only 14% said that they were using e-forms, and 12% said they're using um, signing capabilities in relation to mobile devices. When we look at business processes, and this is one of the, um, there was actually a question that came up a little bit earlier that I noticed in relation to business processes, where are people using these things? Accounts payable and technical documentation are actually the most popular in relation to mobile capture. Um, then we find things like uh, claims. And in the insurance in industry in particular, field operators, field adjusters are using mobile devices more and more. So the biggest three benefits in relation to the use of mobile and portable, um, speed of data availability, the, again, getting back to the idea if we can capture it at first touch point, um, then it makes it much more available and accessible and, and actionable for us. And then, of course, keeping paper out of the back office. Um, if we can capture it early on, then capture it um, actually in a digital form as well, then we're of benefit there. Some of the issues in relation to uh, portable and mobile, you know, connection bandwidth. This is always a, a big challenge uh, for a lot of folks. And the idea of um, or concerns about device security. You know, this becomes a concern for them. And uh, so there's a little bit of resistance that results uh, uh, in relation to that. And so when we talk about the cloud, um, and we have to talk about the cloud these days, 49% of the people that we polled said they still have no policy uh, or decision on capture uh, in relation to that, 21% um, in relation to cloud. And so 21% said still they're unlikely to even use the cloud. So what are you guys seeing in relation to this? Um, let me start off with um, Jim this time. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Uh, I would say on the cloud-specific question, a lot of interest around how would we use uh, the cloud in the future, uh, particularly in terms of adding applications that might be really customer-centric, while retaining their, uh, their existing mailroom and line of business operations. So we don't see this necessarily right now at least as a replacement mm -hmm. for, for mailroom or for on-prem, you know, on-site scanning because there's still such a heavy footprint of paper and fax and electronic information that's going through email and directly into the organization. But what we do see is a strong interest in uh, putting together like a three- to five-year plan of how we might be able to add uh, new customer onboarding, you know, at remote locations with a cloud-based 
component. So I think what you're going to see is a lot more uh, hybrid solutions as opposed to mm -hmm. an either-or scenario. Make yeah. sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dan, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, uh, our customers uh, are moving, I'd say, slowly and cautiously uh, to add mobile capture into their document capture mix, Bob. Um, we offer this now as well, in addition to all the other capture uh, components that we have. Uh, and the reason is that some of our customers have unfortunately experienced epic failures in some early mobile projects. Mm. Uh, they were sold on cool technology before they had worked out the essential process management changes that the organization really needed to have in place first to have success. And I'm going to put in a plug, by the way, right here for AIMS uh, process management training, uh, because this is an essential piece that has to be in place before you can be successful with the mobile project. Uh, on cloud storage, uh, the way we see it is cloud storage uh, has become part of the IT landscape now. It's not special any longer. Some of our customers use it, but others have some serious security and compliance concerns, or uh, they can't put information in the cloud in a different uh, jurisdiction, things like that. They also face some operational barriers with performance uh, around cloud storage. So it makes more sense for them to stay with their on-prem applications, Bob. Okay, thank you. And thanks for that plug, by the way. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, to kind of go right off of both of, of what just was said, uh, having a hybrid approach, I think, is, is critical. So uh, the EMC applications have both on-premise as well as cloud solutions. And one of the critical mm -hmm. components is being able to easily move content from one to the other. So having a hybrid approach is important, um, one that has easy access, uh, that's a, a thin client base where you can just go to a web link, has all of the, the correct levels of security for a document management system. Um, and then uh, just going back to your mobile capture, uh, when, you're, when you're capturing images out in the field or away from the office, you want to have the ability on any device to be able to take an image, have a REST service so that you can clean up the image and make sure it's a quality looking image, and then submit that just like it was coming from a scanner. So we have solutions um, that are out of the box for that, um, that allow you to take a photo, um, submit it directly to the application, it will then classify and capture the data, and then feed it along in the process. So that's kind of what we're seeing from a cloud and mobile perspective. things that we always like to do with these webinars is, is to give our audience a few things to think about. You know, so, so here's one of the things that I would suggest. Look at how paper enters your business, and this kind of gets back to the process element, right? Where, uh, where does it slow things down? Does it clog up the workspace? Does it clog up the process and, and slow things down? Do you have bottlenecks? And where does it restrict information access and, and process flexibility? Identify who's in charge of process and, and um, takes responsibility for that and pay particular attention to processes that scan to archive post process you know and and look at maybe changing some of that to upfront scanning you know earlier up in the process um, and then of course extend that paper free concept further to the point of of origination you know um, move it out to a branch if you feel that that's the best place to do it or in the field um, or you know it, would the digital mailroom approach be uh, a better approach for you. So these are all things to consider. You know, look at the process, look at where there's this interaction in relation to the paper-based information that you're dealing with. One of the things that, you know, we'd like to leave you with is it is possible for businesses to become less dependent on paper, uh, but you have to identify the opportunities, assess how it's going to happen, plan for it, implement it, measure it, refine it, and repeat. This is not a one-stop um, project. What it is is it's an ongoing process. It should become a, a way of life, so to speak, an ongoing practice. And so these are the, the ways that you get there. Some of the information here may uh, be helpful for you. Um, hopefully the information that we provided as a panel will help you in relation to this to identify some of those opportunities and get you in the right direction. So at this point, uh, what I'd like to do is point you to the industry watch that this is based on. It's the paper-free uh, progress paper uh, industry watch paper that we had put out 
Um, there's a link to it here, but there's also a link in the resources um, that you have uh, available to you right now on screen. So that resources link that Teresa had mentioned uh, a little while ago. Right. So uh, right now we're going to go ahead and turn things over to uh, Jim from the EMC here to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, 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 some of his closing thoughts here and a little bit about EMC Captiva. Jim? Yeah, thank you, Teresa. So again, as, as mentioned, I've been in the capture industry about 23 years, spent 12 over in Europe and the last 10 here in the U.S., and now the marketing manager for capture at Captiva. What I've really seen is this progression, first of all, as mentioned, Paperless office has always been a vision. Folks are working even harder at it now. But the irony is, you know, 4% have achieved it. And what we actually see is an increase in capture-based information coming in. And that could be paper, fax, multi-channel, such as mobile and electronic information, as well as those mass data imports. So whether that be for big data analytics, through running it through OCR and ICR, we see the market growing rapidly because these automation technologies continue to drive very strong ROI uh, within the capture industry as a whole. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you, Jim. And over to Dan Lucarini of IBML. Yeah, thanks, Teresa. I've got the stopwatch going here. Uh, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, just uh, Google Dan Lucarini. Uh, but uh, let's get some information out uh, for you to help you solve these problems. We've got a lot of work to do here. I'd like to invite you to go to our website and download uh, one of our informative white papers that will help you with this process. Uh, IBML is providing end-to-end -end production capture solutions now, all the way from scanners to software and uh, professional services. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. And then over to Mike Gradino of ProConversions. Thank you, Teresa. And I, I would I'd just like to close that. It's really a, about having an information capture plan and putting together a, a good governance plan of the key indexes you need to go find your documents later on. So uh, Pro Conversions, uh, we're a proven systems integrator of advanced capture as well as enterprise content management solutions. We look to identify and implement the right combinations of software, hardware, professional services, as well as outsourcing to handle any business process automation challenge. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, we could build the right company to come to. So thank you again for all your time, and back to you, Bob, or Teresa. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see what we can do to squeeze in another question here. And I know Bob just had a momentary issue with his sound. And let's see if um, Bob is back on the line with us now. Let's see if we can hear him. Bob? Hopefully. Yes, Are you go there? ahead. Yep, we can oh, hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Great. All right. Um, so as far as a few questions, we do have a couple minutes. Um, not sure what happened there, but hmm. It is what it is. Um, one of the things that, uh, or questions that came out, is the idea of um, converting paper and the disposable, uh, disposal of paper-based records once we've captured it. Um, what are your thoughts on this, guys? Um, is it a regulatory thing? Is it a best practice? What are you seeing? Um, Dan, let's start with you. Oh. Uh Bob, it's being driven, I think, uh, uh, on both sides. Uh, regulatory compliance certainly has a lot to do with it, uh, but uh, also uh, efficient business operations uh, is still an important driver for that. Uh, so that's what we see happening. Okay. Jim? I would agree. I, I think uh, in terms of regulatory drive is there. Also, you know, I've been to a lot of these organizations that just have football fields full of uh, paper documents and the ability mm -hmm. to get rid of those and uh, recycle that information, get it into electronic format is really driving that as well. 
And I think also with the mobile workforce, you know, just the inability of folks to go find something in a file cabinet anymore, right? Everyone's dispersed throughout the organization, and people just want to pull that up in their BPM or their uh, content management system and not, not be troubled with the whole paper interaction. Hmm. And, Mike, would you agree with all that? Yeah, I think this is a very critical uh, discussion, and here's why I would say it, is once you go to an enterprise document management system and you digitize your records, those paper records aren't the, aren't the records anymore. The actual mm. digital copy is. If you go back to, so let's just give you, for instance, you take your human resource records and you scan them all to the repository, and then you keep the paper, right? <laughs> and now somebody goes and files a piece of paper in the paper record. It's not in the digital. Right? All of a sudden, mm -hmm. now you don't have a chain of custody. So it's critical for clients. Once you start scanning documents, shred them. Get rid of them. We work with clients. We go on site. We do the scanning for them. We do 100% QC of the documents. And then um, traditionally, we shred them within three months of, uh, of actually scanning them. So that's uh, our take, and it's an important piece because if you don't, you now all of a sudden lose that chain of custody, and you, you don't really have a legal representation. All right. Well, we're up on the uh, top of the hour here, and uh, we're coming to that point where we will close it out. I want to thank you all, our panel, uh, for being part of this, EMC IBML Pro Conversions, for um, underwriting this webinar, because without you guys and without our underwriters, we wouldn't be able to do this for those in our listening uh, audience today. So. For those of you who are out there, uh, you can come in and see us in April, April 26th to the 28th. The AIM annual conference will be held in New Orleans. Uh, for more information about that, you can go to aimconference.com. Um, for more training, if you want to sharpen your skills, we do have at AIM quite a bit of uh, training programs, quite a few available, one of which Dan had mentioned earlier. Um, about process, but also content, records management, governance, and so on. And so I do encourage you to uh, visit the AIM website and um, see what we have to offer there. So on behalf of our panel, on behalf of AIM, uh, I thank you um, for joining us today. I hope that you found it informative. By all means, take advantage of the resource link that we provided to you to download that report and all of the other great resources that our panelists have put together for you today. So with that, uh, thank you, and we'll see you next time.